Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey. On today's video, ended up being quite a bit of NFL draft notes to discuss as it relates to the Dallas Cowboys. So let's begin with Caleb Farley. The unfortunate news that he needs back surgery is he no longer an option at number 10. I'm going to give this one three stars. It is still early in this whole process thing in terms of what the impact's going to be, but this is a big deal for Caleb Farley and for the Dallas Cowboys, in large part because this is not the first back procedure Caleb Farley's had before the age of 23, before he's even hit the NFL. Now, Farley is going to get a micro disectomy, which is going to help handle a herniated disc in his back. He had a surgery back in 2019 that helped to leave some back spasm issues. It is concerning to have not one, but two back procedures before you enter the NFL. Farley, in terms of the concerns on him as a prospect, injury was a factor. Torn ACL in 2017, but he was fine, so that was not a concern for me whatsoever. The 2019 surgery to fix the back spasms, that was a factor, but it was only one. It was probably fine. Now you're throwing in a second one to help repair a herniated disc, and it's going to cost you your pro day, which, by the way, he would have run so fast. It would have been awesome. This makes Farley a complete wild card for me in the NFL draft. What this boils down to is the difference between evaluation and valuation. The eval of a player is just what they are as a prospect. Farley has every tool that I want in a cornerback. He's long. He's a great athlete. He held up very well in coverage at Virginia Tech. He checked off all those boxes. That's why he was my number one prospect as a cornerback on the field. But now you got to throw in the valuation side of it. Where do you value an admittedly what I consider to be a great prospect on the field, but someone who didn't play football last year? Was not able to go to his pro day because he had back surgery for the second time in his young career. So I love the player. I love what Caleb Farley could be as a potential uh, prospect here. I, I really do love that. But the risk is massive. That is significant from the Cowboys' perspective. Coming off a second back surgery, yes, it's still early. I can't take him at 10. I don't know where he ends up going. I love the player, don't get me wrong. At some point, the risk will absolutely be worth it. But for NFL teams, for the most part, the NFL draft is about minimizing and mitigating risk. Caleb Farley right now has significant risk as a prospect because of that back surgery. So he's going to be there at 10. I can't take him, though, if I'm the Dallas Cowboys. So I'm curious what you guys think here. Where would you draft Caleb Farley? Would you take him in round one? Would you trade down round two? Not at all. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Now, we are on the march to 100K here, 100K subscribers at the Dallas Cowboys Report. And I know a lot of you guys already are. Thank you all so much. To help us get there, though, I am personally asking you guys to tell a friend. Send them the link to, to, the subscribe, or to, to subscribe to the Cowboys Report. I want to get to 100,000. That way I get the plaque and we become the only Cowboys YouTube channel out there to be at 100,000 subscribers. We're going to get there. I want to get there by the draft, but I do need your guys' help to actually pull that off. So if you haven't subscribed, do it right now. If you are, do me a favor and tell a friend. Let's talk draft with the Dallas Cowboys, specifically as it relates to Alabama prospects. Bama had their pro day today in which Mike McCarthy was in attendance. And oh, by the way, defensive coordinator Dan Quinn also went to watch. What that means? Oh, yeah, four stars. This one, this is straight news. The Cowboys are looking heavily at Alabama prospects, which should not come as a surprise because they've got plenty of good prospects. Also, the Cowboys have needs at those positions. Kind of a no-brainer, right? Still is significant that the head coach and defensive coordinator were both scheduled to be in attendance at the Pro Day. The top Bama prospects then, the ones I'm focusing on for the Cowboys, four guys, Alex Leatherwood, Christian Barmore, Dylan Moses, and Patrick Sertan. So in this case, let's begin with the offensive one, and then we'll go to the defensive guys. Leatherwood is first up here. A not in play at number 10 overall, but he is going to be in, in, in play 
potentially in round two. Now, Leatherwood seems to test pretty well. You know, the full numbers, the official numbers, yet, but had a pretty good day. I am intrigued by him in round two because he could be your left guard year one and maybe kick over to left tackle down the road. I don't think it's the most likely outcome, but certainly is a player to keep an eye on. Now, of course, defense coordinator Dan Quinn was there, so we'll spend more time on the defensive prospect side. How about Dylan Moses, who returned in 2020 after tearing an ACL in 2019? He did not test today, and I got major concerns with Dylan Moses because he was not the same guy, especially as the year went on, on the field. And he's publicly said this next part, that he battled through pain all season. He was not 100%. It got worse as the year went on, and he even considered quitting football altogether. That's a big freaking deal. When your player says he almost quit coming off his knee injury, in theory he'll be more closer to 100% this upcoming season. That's a major red flag. So I loved Moses the prospect back in 2018 before the injury. Now in 2020, oh, things get a little bit different. Maybe a team gambles on him back into day two. Before that, though, that's really tough to actually invest in. All right, defensive lineman time now. Christian Barmore, the very talented prospect, by the way, who really closed the year strong, right? 9.5 tackles for loss, 8 sacks. Would be a nice addition to the Cowboys' defensive line. I don't love him at number 10, though. In the event of a trade down for the Cowboys or a trade back into round one, well, that could make some sense if he's still in, in play. Excuse me. The big one, though, Patrick Sertan, the cornerback prospect. We don't know the official times yet in terms of agility or even the official 40 time announced by the school and what the NFL will use, but the 446 number has been thrown out there, so I, I will mention that. Checked off the boxes you really want to see checked off. Good explosion numbers, still waiting on the agility. I think he is very much in play at number 10 overall. In fact, I will go so far as to call Sertan the favorite to go number 10 to the Dallas Cowboys, especially since not that many teams ahead of Dallas are even in the market for a cornerback. So what would you guys do? Would you draft Patrick Sertan in round one? In light of Caleb Farley's injury, factoring in what the Cowboys need, I think he is the most sensible and I will argue the most likely pick for Dallas in round one. But you guys get your votes in for me as well in the comment section, right? Type in Y for yes or type in N for no. Let's dip into free agency now. How about signing Alex Smith? Two stars on this one, and it's fine. Uh, Mike Fisher threw this one out there because, you know, Dak made the comment of how he was inspired by Alex Smith's recovery and the inspiration and all that kind of stuff, which is fine. And the Cowboys are in the market for a backup quarterback, and that's what Alex Smith is. But I will make this point. If Alex Smith has to play for you, you're in trouble. The reality is, as great and, and incredible as his comeback was, he was washed last year. The numbers do not lie, folks. Yeah, the completion percentage is pretty good. More interceptions than touchdowns. And his QBR, the ESPN stat, which factors in level of competition, was bad. That's not good. And if you want to bring in a veteran backup, I don't have any issue, issues with that. I would argue I'd rather just play, pay Garrett Gilbert next nothing than having Alex Smith on my team. But if you want to bring in a vet, I'm not going to argue with it. In the end, with what the Cowboys are now paying Dak Prescott, the backup quarterback spot is whatever. I would like to have someone who can go around 500 if possible if he's cheap, but I'm not going to invest a bunch of money into the position. If Alex Smith wants to come in on like a one-year, $2 million deal, cool, no issues, that's whatever. He's just not that good anymore. That's, that's the unfortunate reality for the Cowboys. So I got no issues bringing in a backup veteran quarterback, but as we saw last year, never going to be as good as the guy you have paid all that money to, right? So who do you want as the backup quarterback? I'm down to roll with Garrett Gilbert in all honesty. He flashed a little bit. I'm not too concerned in the end about Ben DiNucci because he was pretty bad, but just throwing that out there as an option. Now, today's show is made possible by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet and use the promo code that you see on screen. When you put down at least 100 bucks, they're going to hook you up with a 125% deposit 
bonus. That is chatsports.com slash bet. Don't forget to use that promo code COWBOYS125. Let's talk safety draft now. Trevon Merrick, two stars on this one, firmly inside that rumor category. Could end up coming true in all seriousness. Uh, the report from Doug Farrar, which I had missed uh, about two days ago, is that the Cowboys have a virtual meeting scheduled with the TCU safety. Now we're starting to get some leaks and notes about who's, who is meeting with who. Who? Whomst? Whatever. I'm intrigued by this option. I don't love Merrig as a true single high rangy free safety. I don't think the athletic ability is quite there, but the instincts certainly are. And ironically enough, if we were in the Mike Nolan defense and playing split safety coverage, he would be a just dream fit in that role. Any more cover one, cover three? It's not perfect, but I think it could work. And I do love Merrick as a tight end stopper. Frankly, I, have, I, I, I finished my film study on him. I wrote this down in my notes. I thought Merrick was better in coverage than some of the cornerbacks I've watched because he lined up a lot in a slot. And I think that that's a good sign for Dallas. And I'm not going to be a, a beggar chooser type deal when my current starting free safety is Darian Thompson, even if the Cowboys add one of Malik Hooker or DeMonte Casey as I fully expect them to. I don't know if Merrick, frankly, is even going to be on the board for the Cowboys in round two. I am unconvinced that it ends up being the case. I really don't know if, that's what en if, if that is what ends up happening. So if he's there, or even if Richie Grant is there, either of those guys, I'm pumped to get them in round two. So what would you guys do? Would you take the TCU product in round two? Type D for draft, or you can type in P for pass. Let's wrap up with some stupidity. Shouldn't have paid Dak Prescott. Fake news on this one. Mike Florio is at it again. Here's what he had to say. He said, Florio, forgive me, Florio says, the Cowboys should have let Dak Prescott hit the open market and tried to save some money because that could have happened because the, there's a down free agent market due to a low salary cap, which has been fairly true, although there are exceptions everywhere that Florio conveniently chose to ignore. The reality of this idea and this take, folks, it's time to do it. We're resetting the nonsense meter. Thank you, producer Sam. It has been zero days because this is stupid. There's no way around this. You never, ever, ever, ever let a top 10 quarterback hit the open market, coming off injury or not. And do you know why that's the case? Because look around the damn NFL. Look at what is out there. The Chicago Bears just tripled the salary of Andy Dalton. You're telling me they wouldn't have thrown bags of cash at Dak Prescott? The Patriots spent millions and still don't have a long-term quarterback. The same is true of Washington. The Denver Broncos, Carolina Panthers, New York Jets, of course, before the Kareem Jackson move by Denver, all currently have enough, enough cap space to do the exact same deal the Cowboys gave Dak Prescott. Currently, right now, after signing other dudes. This take is asinine. This is stupid. And this is pure clickbait by Florio, so it's my fault for even bringing it up in the end. But this decision by, or this take by Mike Florio is horrible. You do not let your quarterback test the open market because you know what happens? You run the risk of the quarterback saying, you know what, I'm out. I don't want to deal with this crap. I'm bailing. Or even in a different outcome, it becomes a bidding war for your franchise quarterback and you end up paying more. It was the correct decision to pay Dak Prescott Letting him test the open market in terms of bad Florio takes, that one ranks near the top. 